Welcome to office number two. Uh, we've been very kindly loaned this area to continue to do the administration side of things of the boat. But actually we've been taking a break this week and working on Liz's new website. So uh, I've been tinkering away here, but I thought I'd give you a little tour outside and uh, go and see some of the progress that's happening. The first thing we'll go and see is the stainless steel man who's putting together our ladder. And uh, then we'll go over to the boat and we'll see, I don't know how many people are working on it today, it's probably just something close to 12. Uh, but I'm telling you all this now because it's pretty noisy out there. So let's go see um, what's, what's occurring. So uh, this is the stainless area and we've got Mr. Hammock talking to Un. Discussing the intricacies of uh, our ladder. Un, tell us about the ladder. The ladder we been the, 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 the rudder or the ladder? Rudder. <laughs> <laughs> we changed um, uh, this side a bit uh, because by the my drawing that bit probably just uh, 75 mil. Now we cut because not uh, enough on the uh, platform. And we move in and we move the second pole in here. Also. So let's have a look at the plan here. Yep. This is. Okay, as we're looking down on top, yep, uh, that's the, key. That's the, uh, the box that contains our batteries and the side profile, there's the ladder there. And that there is supposed to pop down in there, but we're slightly out. That there is this bit here. So the idea is, can you hold that for me? Yep. So we're going to move that leg over a bit. We're going to move that over there. Yep. And then this slots in the top, doesn't it? Yep. So, yep. Uh, yep. To be installed like that. This one to be coming in the sniffer and in here or in the pole also. So we've actually got, we've made this piece already, yep. haven't we? Already done. Let's go and find and that. that piece on, on the board. We've said it before and we'll say it again. The stainless steel work at PSS Boatyard is excellent. Their methods may be unorthodox, but the quality of the work is unsurpassed. We'll talk more about the stainless in another episode. So we thought we'd do something a little different this week and give you a live guided tour of our work area. So what we'll see here are a whole bunch of workers busying away. It's pretty noisy, um, hence this voiceover. I wasn't able to talk in camera at the time. So there it is, wrapped up. Keep off the monsoon rains. And uh, we'll just go underneath now. The first person we'll catch is Pong having a fag. It looks like he's actually servicing a uh, grinder there. On the left, the varnishers have put together this little workshop with cling film to keep out the dust. And we can see Dang down there preparing some more polyurethane and all our cupboard doors hanging up. There's Tom who's taken their freshly painted door with our white vine veneer on one side and the purple laminate on the other as you can see. So that goes into the heads, into our toilet. So right now it looks like there's only five people, four or five people working up on deck. Uh, we can see up to seven or eight at any one time. At the back here we can see Kim who's part of the painting team. He's put up some more cling film because they're going to be spray painting high build paint. Which is a, is a, it's like a filler on those cockpit boxes. Sorry, on the rear boxes. Um, this is the cockpit. And we can see here that Pong has started to put our teak down. We're going to have teak just in the seats in the cockpit and on those rear boxes you saw on the lids. There's our cockpit box made out of honeycomb. And if we just step forward, in the background you may be able to hear a um, rather loud buzzing noise. And that is Goy, our head painter down there with a compressed air uh, sanding mechanism that he uses. Um, much quicker than doing it by hand, which is what Ute is doing up there on the um, anchor locker. So, swinging round, uh, there's Lek. Give us a wave, Lek. He is working on the box with Moo. 
Going down below where it's a little bit quieter, although not much quieter, we've got Tui. One of the carpenters who's just filling off fiddly bits of uh, veneering inside cupboards. And there's Tom with that door we just saw. He's sizing up that gap there. He's got to fit that door. It, uh, it's, it's not going to fit the same because it's a different thickness now, so he's had to make some alterations. And in the back here in the cabin are two new team members. And this is Yotra on the left and Zor on the right, and they're both from Myanmar, two extremely hard workers. And you can see they're taking back the paint on the diesel tanks and they will also be fiberglassing around that area, hopefully to fix that tiny little leak we've got. So back round into the saloon, Tui cutting away little strips and finally in the front is our other varnisher who is doing a bit of vacuuming and that's obviously because they have to work in a dust free environment and they're great people to have on board because they keep the boat clean. So there we have it, there's a quick guided tour. Let's break those jobs down now. We started the week with the sawmill and a rather large plank of teak. In the clip you just saw, you'll have noticed that Pong has begun work in the cockpit seat, but before that he selected a decent bit of teak with the help of his son Tui and sliced it up. It's overseen by our project manager, Un, because Un is the one who made the measurements. He wants to make sure every plank is the same width. He may look unassuming, but Pong heads up an entire team of carpenters around the yard. At one point, his gang were working on four different boats, including Thea, the 90-foot motorboat, which has an entirely wooden interior. He's a true craftsman, and his son's taken their father's footsteps. His eye for a decent bit of timber has to be commended. And he's even apprenticed by his grandson. So after a day spent putting the outer planks in place, Hong is now able to fill in and we're able to get a good idea of what the cockpit seats are going to look like. Originally Esper had teak seats in the cockpit and um, they came up to around here and were set back slightly so we had a white edge all the way around. But this time the carpenters have been working like engineers to ensure that the teak is right up to the very edge and that in turn will ensure that we don't get rubbish and dirt all caught round the outside. A nightmare to clean. And here's a piece of teak that's being bent to go onto the cockpit. Looks a bit like the Seven Bridge. Let's take a quick look at that cockpit box. As you can see, we're following the edge of the combing and building a frame out of honeycomb. Here you can see the lid and the lip epoxied in place. Like the rear boxes, the honeycomb has a layer of epoxied fiberglass to give it strength. We're still waiting for our paint delivery, which has to come from the States via Singapore. Once delivered into Thailand, it has to be checked by customs before we receive it. Our painting team is getting itchy feet and keen to finish the job. So here are the boxes with the high build that's been sprayed on and now they're sanding it back to give a lovely smooth finish. But you can see now that it's wiped pretty much what the boxes are going to look like. In the rear cabin, Tui has finished the veneering, so we can now attend to the fuel tanks. In the past year, we've suffered from a minor leak, and my own efforts to plug the leak with Indian domestic epoxy were in vain. In the earlier clip, you saw Yobchai and Saw preparing this area, and once finished, Mu takes over with the epoxying, whilst Yobchai cuts pieces of fibreglass.
Once again, we're using biaxial for strength. In the cabin at the back of the boat, underneath the bed, are the fuel tanks. Where else? The last year or so, we've had a slight leak and the fuel has pooled at the bottom here, which isn't very pleasant. So, rather than trying to find that pinprick of a leak, we've decided to take take them right back and then to epoxy and biaxial them again so the whole thing is a lot stronger. So this is what Yod Chai has been doing today. And then over here, one of the last bits of beautiful veneer to go in around our post underneath our mizzen. And the only place on the boat where the grain goes north to south. I didn't tell you, I saw Moo indicating to the two carpenters that this is where you'd get pole dancers. He was doing a little, <laughs> doing a little pole dance around it. <laughs> Midget pole dancers. <laughs> so the varnishers are working at the front of the boat on Saturday and uh, the main job here is the floor. The last time we looked at the floor, it, it had just been installed by Pong, but since then it's been sanded back by Ton, his son, and he's taken back the gaps slightly so they're going to be easier to raise. This afternoon the varnish will go down and we're going to see a beautiful glossy floor. Just look at the way he's managed to get each of the planks to match exactly. I'm very happy with uh, Pong's work. A purple door. We interrupt this programme for breaking news from our roving reporter on the scene. That's right Liz, I'm here on the ground with a special report cataloguing some not so amusing catastrophes. A regular viewer, Tony Gibb, wrote in to complain about the lack of input from our third crew member, Millie the Cat. Well Tony, it's not good news I'm afraid. Millie has been tasked with looking after a rather pregnant cat who looks like a balloon on four sticks. This is little mum, who we rescued from the yard this week. If you remember, two of her kittens used to feature in our update clips, but the yard dogs have been turning on them and have savaged four kittens this week alone. Heartbroken, we couldn't bear to see little mum give birth to another doomed litter, so we brought her home. She's about to have her litter any day now. Millie, meanwhile, is having to contend with another litter of kittens who were abandoned by their mum, Little Miss. She used to come in and eat Millie's food every day, but something has happened to her and she leaves behind four little gremlins. Millie is not sure what to make of them, and here you can see the adventurous little chaps trying to make friends with her. She's not so impressed. <laughs> We'll have more on this catalogue of events as they develop. Back to you in the studio, Liz. And now for something completely different.